We're roughly one month out from the last frost freeze date in my area here in zone 8A in North Alabama. And I like to get some vegetables started early in these humidity domes before the last frost. This gives me a head start on the growing season and I wanna walk you through this step-by-step -step process that I do to have a successful garden every year. Hi, I'm Dr. Tom Warren and you're watching The Plant Doctor. Let's get started. So the crops we're going to grow are going to be a couple different things. We're going to grow tomatoes. I have red cherry tomatoes. We have celebration hybrid. We have better boy hybrid. We have Rutgers and we have chef's choice tomatoes as well. So we've got a myriad of tomatoes. We've also got a few melons that we're going to be growing. I've got cantaloupe. So we have Hale's best. And then I have crimson sweet watermelon. And then we have two types of peppers. So we have bell peppers, we have YOLO wonder, and then we have jalapeno peppers. We have mild jalapeno peppers that we're growing. And then also one of my favorite summertime vegetables is going to be squash. And so we're gonna get some squash growing as well. These are all things that you can get started in your home about 30 days before the average last frost date in your area. One way you can figure out the last frost date in your area is simply to Google last average frost state and then the city and state that you live in it should pop up for me it's april the 11th so what i like to do is get to april the 11th look at the 10-day forecast and if they're not calling for a frost i'll go ahead and put stuff out if they're calling for a frost or the potential of a frost say from april 11th to april 20th what i'll do is i'll hold off until that cold snap passes and then put out my vegetables but let's walk through the process of seed starting indoors. So there's a few things that you're going to need to start seeds for indoors. The first thing you need is a humidity dome. So this is a Jiffy humidity dome here. And so all this is, it has 72 cells that you can fill up with potting mix. And I'm just using miracle Grow potting mix. I'm not using anything special here. And down here in the bottom of this, this holds water. So we fill this up with water to roughly a half an inch. We put our potting soil in our cells and then we insert the cell tray into the bottom and we use capillary action to pull water up through the soil and into the seeds. The dome helps hold in that humidity and it's going to ensure we get a higher germination rate than we otherwise would. So I have another type of dome over here that I wanna show you. And I actually like this one better. The only downfall to this one is it's a little more expensive. You can notice the height difference between the two. This one will allow your vegetables to grow a little bit taller before they start touching the top of the plastic. You really don't want your vegetables touching the plastic. I've, I found out that can lead to some mold issues because you're gonna have all sorts of condensation on this plastic. And if the leaves are in constant contact with it, that's not necessarily a good thing. So the vegetation can get taller inside of this dome, but also this dome has ventilation flaps. So there's two on the top and then there's one on either side. So as these vegetables begin to grow in this dome, what I can do is begin to harden off that vegetative material by slowly opening up these vents to, until eventually they're all the way open. I can leave them all the way open for two or three days. And then I can take the humidity dome off and leave the vegetables exposed to just normal outside air for two or three days. And then we can transplant them. I like this setup a little bit better. However, these are somewhat hard to find. I got this one off of uh, greenhousemegastore.com if I'm not mistaken. These little jiffy ones you can pick up at Lowe's or Home Depot. They're a whole lot easier to get a hold of. If you're growing peppers, one thing you're going to need is a heat mat. So a heat mat just plugs into the wall and as the name suggests, it just generates heat. So we put this underneath the tray and it, the heat rises up through the tray, warms up the soil so that those peppers will germinate. The warmer the soil temp, the better germination we're going to get on these peppers. So we'll use a heat mat for the tray that's gonna have the peppers in it. You're going to need some sort of labeling system. So you're gonna need some labels and a Sharpie or a pencil or something like that. So my daughter off camera, she went ahead and made us some labels here that we're gonna be using for this demonstration. So we're just gonna take this off. You need something to kind of poke a little hole into the soil. I like using this mechanical pencil here because it has a grip and I just go down until the grip touches the soil. 
So we just make small holes for our seeds and then we just drop a seed in the hole and cover it up. And it's that simple. So I'm gonna start here with the Chef's Choice tomatoes. And I'm not gonna plant these in rows going this way. I'm gonna plant them in the short rows going this way. So technically we're looking at columns here because they're going up and down relative to how me and you are looking at this. So and we're just gonna do one seed per cell. And then once we have our row planted, we'll come in and, and tag it. So one of my students' fathers is actually going to bring his tractor out and we are going to till up a spot beside the greenhouse at the college and we're going to have a little student community garden this year. I'm really looking forward to it and this is the very beginning of that. And so what we're planning to do is plant things on 21 day increments. This will be the first row of crops going in and so we're going to have these initial seedlings come up and 21 days later we are going to repeat this process. The reason we're doing that, we don't want all our fruits and vegetables at one time. So if I were to plant all Rutgers tomatoes today, they're all gonna be ready at the same time. I'm gonna be overrun with Rutgers tomatoes. But if we stagger when we put our seeds in, we can stagger when we get fruit. And that's the goal of this garden that we're gonna be doing this summer. So I was, as I was working through this process, I just went ahead and put everything in one instead of doing two separate ones. I've got 60 plants here. So there's 10 rows with six in each row. And so we've got all our tomatoes in, we've got all our peppers in, we've got the squash in, we've got the watermelon in, the cantaloupe in, everything is, is in and ready to go. So let's talk about post care for this. Once you put your seeds in, you wanna put on your humidity dome and if your humidity dome has vents, we want to make sure those are completely closed off. We want to make this as humid as possible in here. Keep it a constantly wet environment. So remember, we put the water in at the bottom, about a half inch of water at the bottom. And I can already tell the soil has soaked that up and the soil layer, even at the top, is wet. So what we're going to do with this from here... We're gonna put this on my back patio that faces due south, and we're gonna plug in the heat mat. I'm gonna check this tomorrow, and what I want to see is this. I wanna see condensation on the dome. I wanna see that my soil is wet and moist, and that's what you need to look for as well. If you don't see any condensation on your dome, if you don't see any uh, evidence of your soil being moist, you need to add some water. And all you gotta do is pick up one of the corner of this, the tray inserts and pour some water in there and you're good to go. Let's say you don't have a, a south facing porch. Where can you put this? It really needs to be in a south facing window. If you want to do a little bit of legwork, really the best thing to do with this is going to be in the mornings, set it outside, leave it outside all day. If it's going to be cold at night, say you're getting down at below 40 degrees, bring it inside, you wanna keep this warm, okay? The warmer it stays, the better. So here in about 10 to 15 days, we're gonna see all sorts of vegetation popping up in here. And within 28 days or so, this stuff's gonna be ready to plant. We're gonna treat these just like plugs. We'll be able to pull them out, stick them in the ground, and they'll be good to go. Guys, as always, thank you for watching The Plant Doctor. And until next time, happy gardening.